Merry Christmas guys, going to do a bit of work on the bike, totally stuffed out with turkey so I thought well I'll come in here and I'll stick my chain on, I've had the chain off and it's been um, cleaned up and been soaking, let's have a quick gander at that, and there she is now, all nice and clean and lubed, ready to go on, um, and then it'll be a chain lube on it, at the moment that's the oil that it's been soaking in for the last two days. Um, now, putting the uh, a change in the front sprocket on the ZZR is a right pain in the ass, and putting the chain on is proven to be equally a pain in the ass. So the first bike I've come across where you've actually got to take part of the fairing off before you can get the clutch reservoir bolt out and the bolt behind the clutch reservoir. Um, and then the speed sensor and the rest of the chain cover can come off then um, so that I can put the chain on. So it's a bit of a faff and never having gone round that part of the bike I'm just going to video it in case I totally cock it up and then I can have a look see see what I've done wrong I'm going to put it back together. So bear with me and uh, we'll have a bash and see how we go. on. Okay so a little bit of light on the subject and we can see a little bit clearly what needs to be done. The bolt that's a pain in the ass to get to is tucked right down in there and when the fairing's on you can't get a socket in there. Even use the wobbly bar socket, I've used UJs, I've used a combination of both and it still can't be done because it's actually raised up a little bit. So I can now get to it so I need to take out the one in there, that one there, that one there, that one there and take the speed sensor out Get that back over where it should be for the minute. Um, then the cover will come off and then I should be able to put the chain on. So let's see what, what happens. Let's see, we'll leave that on a little bit more light on the subject. These are actually on quite tight. Although I am only using a very small socket and wrench to get it off. And now for the bastard. Come on. This one we'll go all the way and get them out. Now these are supposed to be the same size but I guarantee you they bloody won't be. So we'll lay them out so that I can see which way they come out from. Come out. Is that one's got a cable clamp on it which should be for the cable for the speed sensor now as I said this is uh, no, there you go see that's three bolts and three different fucking lengths Good job I laid them out. Okay. If 
five bolts, five different lengths. Now I'm pretty sure that this one in the uh, clutch reservoir will go right the way through the, the cover and right into the engine. So this is probably going to be a real long one. There we go. Right. So let's bring you around this side. Now this is the first time I've had this off. So there you can see it's pretty crappy in there. I'm gonna give that a bit of a clean out before I put it all back together. Uh, lots of chain lube and dirt and grease and grime and, and total shite. But I think what I'll do is I'll get the chain on for now and then rip that outside tomorrow and give that a right good clean out see where we go all right so rather than take it outside and give it a good old clean up now i've just scraped the worst of that out so that i don't get too much over the clean chain when i put it on um, and then that'll give me the opportunity to wheel the bike out tomorrow Give that a good clean out. Give it a good lube up. And you'll notice that the uh, the drive sprocket there is quite dry and rusty on the edge. And that was all down to me. Um, I gave it a right good degrease on the chain. And obviously the degreaser has gone through as I've been spinning it. And ended up on the sprocket there. Clean most of that off. And then I gave it a good hose down and a rinse. Which has rinsed out a lot of the... The degreasing agent as well but obviously left all the cack inside and then I got, it got left for a couple of days <clears throat> excuse me without um, me doing anything to it and obviously that's just a little bit of surface rust on there and uh, yeah a little bit of lube on there when the chain goes on and that'll be sorted okay so the chain is partially in I'm just going to feed it through the rest of the way we can start to put this all back together. Good luck. Apologise if you can't see anything at the moment, but there's so little room in here, I've got nowhere else to put the stool that you're sitting on. Come on, you count. It's a bit of a worry. That's better. Unnecessary worry that was. There's one tooth out on the rear sprocket, which made the chain one link too short. It's just surprising just how much crap can get back on the chain just pulling it through. So Let's pull you back this way and you can see in there now that the chain is on and already there's, there's oil on the front sprocket which is coming out of the chain which is a sign that the chain is well lubed 
although it's not sort of dripping or anything like that it's obviously got a good soak right through it's been soaking in uh, 10 weight engine oil for probably about 50 hours now we come to the back there's the uh, there's the back if we put the link in there as you can see I've already got the X-rings on Come on. Oh, could need an extra hand here. So bear with me. We're going back on the stall for a second. There we go. We're in just needed to take the weight of the chain off of the bottom links okay so that's the chain in place I'll uh, do the rivet in a minute meanwhile time to put all this lot back together I suppose I could let you watch that really couldn't I I'll stick you about there should get the bulk of it and, uh, Cleaning off the push rod for the clutch. I need to move you a bit more. Because there's no room in here, I need to get into some pretty weird positions to get it all back in. convinced that that's in. It may well be. Oh, that feels better. Right. Let's get the one that goes through the clutch. Actually, what I should have done, which I only just realised I didn't do, but managed to get away with it. Well, I didn't take the speed sensor out. I took the bolt out. I forgot to disconnect the speed sensor, but there was enough room there, as you saw. The thing that was actually holding it up was the uh, clutch pipe. Oh, let's try for the bottom one then. pick up now yeah 
Now I'm going to do these up finger tight for the minute. I will get the torque wrench on them later. Never having done them before, I've only got a rough idea of how tight they felt coming out. And they're only uh, going into alley, so we don't want to risk fucking it up. Nick you a minute. If you have a look in there, swap hands, it'd be a damn sight easier. You'll see just there, there is a threaded bolt hole. Now, clearly, something's been in there because it's relatively clean. But I haven't taken anything else off that I can think of. So I'm going to put the rest of it back together and be thinking while I do it. You can see this is going to get some pretty uh, <coughs> fancy editing. Otherwise I'm going to get shitloads of comments to tell me I'm all kinds of a fucking knob. Which I know already. Well, I've only taken those five out. It can't be anything. This is the one for down the long hole. And as you can see, yet again, I forgot to put fucking gloves on. <coughs> That one's gone in. Now the long one in the top. of the resistance that I've got on that is not the brake because before I put the chain on that was spinning as freely as though there was no brakes in there. I've had all those out this afternoon and cleaned and revamped all that lot. So time to go and get my uh, torque wrench, torque those up, put the bottom of the fairing back on and then uh, We'll see about putting the uh, link back in, which I've now lost because I've been spinning the chain around like a tip. You're on here somewhere. This is definitely a not a how to everything. This is a how not to. None of my videos are actually a how to, they're more of a get you out of a shit problem if I can. Right, I'll talk those up, come back to you in a sec. Right, so, couldn't find a torque setting for those. So I've done them up as to what kind of felt about the same as when they come undone. Um, 
but I will carry on looking for a torque setting for them so that that can be done correctly if ever retrospectively so they're all done up now time to put the fairing bottom back on now these go in at a stupid angle and if you get the angle right which I clearly have that time they go in almost perfect first time getting a nice view of the back of my head I do apologize see all this damage here my uh, I won't say dropped it that was the uh, the wrong thing to say but it was more of a controlled put down when the front wheel went in the ice and I was probably doing one maybe two mile an hour and uh, the front wheel decided it was going to go sideways a wee bit Uh, it was kind of a bummer. And I dropped the bike down, and I just I couldn't hold it. It was at the, totally the wrong angle when it went, and uh, ended up having to lay it very carefully on its side. I suppose in a way that I was uh, lucky to get away with that. It could quite easily have been a lot worse. Could have been doing five or ten mile an hour. Would have been skidding up the road. Now, I know these are supposed to be torqued as well, but to be honest, they're only into very, very light, and that's more than enough for them. With a titchy lot. I kind of got the feel for doing these when I was changing all the bolts over from rather corroded and nasty silver to black. Try and give it a bit more of a, a stealthy look. Oh you fucker, that was always one. So let's do these just up a wee bit, make sure they are biting. Which it looks like they are. Don't do them up all the way because you need, or you possibly need, room for the fairing to move. If you do them up too tight, you won't be able to pull it into shape because these will be gripping it. I really am not thinking straight today. I've got all cack from underneath the bike which I'm laid right next to. And a white mat as well. In it. It's kind of good when you do a job on a bike like this, even if it's something that's supposed to be relatively simple and you come across a problem and you think, oh the fuck am I going to get around that? And then you find a way and kind of boosts your confidence for doing the next job. Whatever the next job may be, which for me tomorrow is front brake calipers off. Not sure if I'll need to split them. Won't know that till I actually get them off. 
but they can have a damn good clean up. Need to borrow the light. Do it, excuse me for one moment. on the um, belly pan, a little bit of plastic trim. So that goes through the hole there. it and the end piece just gets pushed on can't show you that because I can't have the camera facing both ways at once there we go and that's that done back to the back of the bike then Okay, so we've got the two O-rings in place, we've got the main link in place, we've got the cover in place, and then we place the tool over the chain, like so. And okay, so gubbins is all uh, cleared. You may cut off halfway through this, I do apologise. The battery is literally on its last legs. There we go. Job done. That's them all flared in. Time for a clean up. We'll do that in the morning. Take the bike outside, whip that cover back off quickly. Now I know how to do that, it shouldn't take too long to do. Give that clean out in there, give the chain some proper chain lube, and then uh, go for a ride. <laughs> 